commands at all times. Touch gloves, good luck, let's go to work. Final instructions from the referee. Time to hand to our commentary team tonight, Hugh Russell and Jim Neely. It's as if the clock has been back, turned back at least two decades. The atmosphere in the King's Hall is quite incredible. And even in the days of Macaulay and Hodkinson and McGuigan, I don't think I've ever come across anything like it. It's as if half of the city of Derry has decamped at Belfast. Right. And the back, other half back. of Belfast is squeezed in here as well. Hugh, this must take you back. Oh, it does, yeah. I mean, how long has it been from you couldn't get into the King's Hall to see a fight? I mean, that says it all. People were wanting to get tickets tonight and just couldn't get in. Uh, so it shows you the interest that this kid has. And for some reason, he has just set everybody alive and people want to come and see him. And just listen to the noise. How long has it been we've heard that? And I guess... Looking at someone like Howard Eastman, the former British champion, Commonwealth champion, European champion. Perhaps should have got a world title decision against William Joppy. Went in against the, the legendary Bernard Hopkins. And this is a real, genuine, live opponent for John Duddy. Eastman's beat him with world-class opponents. I mean, this isn't an easy opponent for John Duddy. Certainly it wouldn't have been an opponent that you would have picked first for him for his homecoming fight, you know. Uh, Eastman's been around the block. He knows exactly what he's doing. And John's going to have to be careful. Uh, they're probably at different stages of their career, but uh, Eastman still has a lot of experience and he's going to have to be very careful. And Eastman landed with a very, very good right hand. That's been one of his trademarks down the years. This is 48th professional contest. He's won 42, 35 inside the distance. And today is Howard Eastman's 37th birthday. So will it be happy birthday, Mr. Eastman, or a very happy Christmas, Mr. John Duddy? Your thoughts, Hugh? I was talking to his coach, uh, John Duddy's coach, before he comes in. And uh, the one thing that they worry about him is John likes to win the fights the way the people like him to win. He could win fights sometimes a lot easier than what he does. Watch but hands, he likes to get involved, hands. and that's what makes him exciting. He, he gets exchanged, he, he stands, and he trades. And uh, he's with a big hands, puncher, so he'll have to be very careful early on and tuck up and look good. Good solid right hand and a good left from uh, Irish John Duddy. John Francis Duddy. Good solid right once again. Eastern, the member, has, uh, although he's lost five times, he's only been stopped once, and Duddy, I think, is uh, aiming to change all that. What a very decent two-fisted attack by Duddy in the opening round, and Eastman, in the Irishman's corner, is shipping a bit of punishment. Good, solid right came back from the two-time world title challenger, uh, Howard Eastman, head, born in Guyana, 37 years ago today, and Duddy, the crowd pleaser. Really putting on a show for his fans, you. He's talking to the, the Duddy camp before the fight started, and they, they don't think Eastman's as strong as he is when he's pushed back. They think he's okay Come coming on, forward, but they sent John out to, to stay on top of him and take the fight to him. Some people might think that's very risky, but they think it's the way the fight's going to go. And obviously, it's so early on, John's taking the fight to him, and it seems to be working at this stage anyway. Good short hands by John Duddy. Eastman can box at that long range, and I've watched him many times over the last few years. He's happy enough to mix it up inside. A good opening round of three minutes of pressure boxing from John Duddy. Boxing in his native Northern Ireland for the first time. His opening 20 contest in the United States, the last two in Dublin, the National Stadium. But Duddy will be pretty pleased, Hugh Russell, with that opening round. Yeah, good start. I mean, it's always going to be a hard start. This is probably a step up in the polling for John Duddy. He has the nerves there. He also has the nerves of fighting home for the first time. Uh, he'd be pleased with that. His corner's pleased with that. Uh, very experienced corner with him, so they won't be rushing into anything. They'll be looking around themselves and just keeping the work rate up and trying to make sure he stays on top of this man and pushes him back as much as he can. I think he's one's a lot harder of a fighter when he's coming forward than what he is when he's getting pushed back. Well, there's a look of uh, great concentration on the face of that... Uh modern day crowd pleaser and look at the crowd here in the king's hall this is quite extraordinary promoter brian peters has done a sterling job stay back, stay back, stay back, stay back. sean russell Box. brings them together so here comes eastman in the white trunks again study in the green and gold Good busy start in that opening three minutes by John Duddy. Good right hand once again comes across very quickly. And again, his punches are very accurate and he's pushed each one onto the back foot. There's a little clash of heads there. And one thing that we've noticed uh, 
since he turned professional years but John Diddy is slightly susceptible to a bit of an old cut and you weren't too far away from that yourself no he does cut but I mean that, that comes with his style you know he comes in and all things blazing and sometimes his heads do crack together unfortunately that happens and he cuts but he's starting to shift really heavy punches here and I'm really surprised that he's getting on top of Eastman as early as what he is in this contest because he's a younger kid and as the fight goes on you'd have to fancy Duddy to come stronger in the later stages than what you would Eastman uh, I thought if Eastman was going to be at any trouble at all this would be his early rounds and he would be very strong but Duddy's not giving him a chance he's leading off the job and he's picking his punches very well his corner will be very very happy good right hand came back from the former British shoulders, Commonwealth man. and European champion who uh, relieved the man who's now in his corner back. Robert McCracken of uh, those three titles McCracken a decent professional boxer himself good work by Duddy getting in behind the jab back to his boxing good orthodox boxing Eastman very unusual character likes to spend a fair bit of time back in his uh, native Guyana we're just uh, relaxes and chills out so, but known to wax philosophical after a contest but nothing philosophical about John Duddy's approach it's uh, no nonsense meeting two veg and he's really coming forward but he's got to remember that uh, the last thing a boxer loses you and it's a little cliche is his punch yeah I mean the big thing about Eastman apart from the punch the pride still there he's, very, he's a very proud man and uh, he won't want to get beat up tonight. But uh, John Duddy seems to be all over him at the minute. Every chance he gets, he's not letting him off, and he's pounding into him. Good pressure boxing again from Duddy. There's not much in the way of movement from uh, Howard Eastman. He has to cover up now, and he's taken a shot or two. There's a, a grin over those uh, familiar features of Howard Eastman, and Duddy coming swarming Keep forward, up, just Keep nudging into the top ten in what is a, a hugely, hugely competitive division. Kelly Pavlik from the United Mike, States is a man they have in their sights, who the, currently holds two versions of the World Middleweight Championship. Felix Stern from Germany and the German-based Armenian, Armenian Arthur Abraham are the other two title holders. And if John Duddy can overcome the former Morgan world title Roy challenger, Roy. Howard Eastman, in impressive fashion, then who knows what the next contest may bring for him. Yeah, it, Duddy seems to be finding his range very quick, a lot quicker than Howard Eastman. High. And he's getting his punches off first, and that, that suits him. Uh, he just well, doesn't want to get drawn into the brawl. He just wants to keep it nice and clean, tucked up, and pick his punches, and he should be okay. But as we said, Eastman's very crafty and has a lot of experience behind him. And he just has to watch every moment of the fight goes on. Well, Eastman at the end of that wanted to do a little hand tap, but uh, John Duddy, focused on the job in hand, was having none of it. And uh, incredible sellout crowd here in the Kings Hall watching John Duddy really go through his paces. Really got himself caught there, but he walked through that shot of Howard Eastman. He's been a pretty decent puncher in his time. 35 of his 42 victories have come by KO, and Eastman has a good chin. He has, yeah, I mean, he's been around the block. We all know who he's been in, but he's been in with better fighters than John Duddy, and that's not taking it away from John Duddy. He's just been around the game a long time, so uh, he's been hit, and he's always stayed there about. He's a strong kid, and it'll take John Duddy to do a lot to take him out of there. The thing I've said about it, the thing about him is he's a very proud man, and sometimes that's the last thing that you lose, you know, but... No looking, the way we're looking at it now, John Duddy seems to be very strong. Certainly the occasion hasn't done anything on him. He just seems to grow on it, and he's looking forward to this as he comes out for the third round. The well, round three of this uh, schedule is a ten-rounder. No uh, titles at, uh, at stake in this one. It's been just over six years since <laughs> Howard step Eastman back, back. went to Las Vegas and took on uh, William Joppy for the vacant WBA middleweight title. One judge had it even, one judge gave it to Joppy by a couple of rounds and one by three, and Joppy was down in the last round, and had Eastwood maybe put the foot on the gas a little bit earlier, he might well have become a world champion. A few years later, of course, he was to lose to the great Bernard Hopkins, who at 40 plus is still playing his professional trade. Good work inside by, by John Duddy in there. You can see all the experience of Eastman. Oh, yeah, Eastman's trying up. to tie him up, hold on, and trying to catch the hands when he get inside. He, and John did get hit with a good right uppercut there and came back well. So he just has to be careful inside. He knows all the tricks. There's no tricks that sort of uh, Eastman needs to be told. He knows exactly what he has to do and who's in front of him. Well, after that loss to Hopkins, who came back and regained his British and Commonwealth and titles, lost the British title most recently just in uh, September to Wayne Elcock who if I'm not mistaken is fighting Arthur Abraham of a world title this weekend so this really would be a considerable scout that's a lovely stiff left hand from Duddy no nonsense starting to get behind his job and starting to work off his job 
see Eastman here trying to take the fight a bit more kill study than what he did at the earlier stages. He's not getting forced back just as easy as he was, so John just has to be careful and work behind that strong left hand. Eastwood with the longer reach is trying to come round the corner with that left hand of his, but Duddy, fortunately for him, has kept his right up every time Eastwood throws the left. Duddy's blocked it. Oh, there's plenty of uh, footage about on both of the fighters, so I'm sure the camps have watched intensely on what each other's good at, and the Duddy camp's intentions were to come out and force Eastman back. And it, he's, he's not as strong a fighter as he is when he's going back as what he is coming forward. And I think that's what John's main objective is going to be tonight. Try and take the fight, kill him, and take right, everything else away back, from him. Step back, step back. Come on, keep it clean, boys, keep it clean. Sean Russell just breaks him up temporarily. There's that left hook of Eastman, which has always been a dangerous punch for him and an effective punch for him down the years. Good variation from Eastman. He can mix it up very nicely. Good work by Duddy, good old professional trick there, just uh, pushing his man away with a forearm. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, he's, he's a very clever boy, so he's going to be so young in his career, you know. That big left hand of John Duddy's is going to be one of his main objectives to try and Stop keep Hardy's man off. He has a great left hand when he puts it and he uses it. He just leads and gets his Watch distance with it. Once he gets his Watch distance with the left hand, he seems to be working very strong in underneath it. He's going to be starting to try and mess him up and get close and hold and mess, take him out of his rhythm. But uh, John Duddy should be too experienced for that, we'd hope anyway. Good finish of the round by Duddy, good little left hand, getting in behind that jab once again, the sensible boxing, and Eastman's sweet little uppercut right at the finish, and Eastman has a real good look at John Duddy. And the crowd may have thought that was a little bit after the bell, but it was absolutely spot on, and Duddy can't complain, and Duddy doesn't complain. Bit of action from that round, there's that trademark Eastman uppercut again, He's been very effective with that, and that's not the first time he's landed. But I think overall, Hugh Duddy is certainly uh, edging these rounds. Oh, yes, I think John's in front, OK, and uh, I'm surprised at how easy he was able to force Eastman back in the early rounds, because I thought that the earlier rounds of the contest would be the dangerous rounds for John Duddy uh, until he gets into the way of the fight, until he gets into the way of what he's doing. There's a cut. You see them working on a cut over John's eye. It's always going to be a problem with him. He has cut in the past, but... Let's hope the, the man in the corner doesn't get too bad, but I see the cuts man in working on it right away. Yeah, that, it doesn't uh, look too bad. No, it doesn't look too bad, and it's uh, right at the outside where it above the eye, then uh, the chance that some blood might run in, and that could cause him a problem, but he really has to watch that, and Eastman certainly will have noticed that, and may well start focusing that yeah, left can, hand of his. It can spur the other fighter on, you know, the fact that it's not too bad, that was a good right hand by Eastman. Uh, starting this round very, very, very sharp. This is going to be a real big round. Good left hand from uh, Eastman once again. Duddy has to be careful. Eastman still a very, very dangerous boxer. He will be hugely motivated for this, Howard Eastman. No intention. I'm quite sure of retiring. He's coming oh, forward. Big left hook. Lovely hook big from left John hook by John Duddy. That shot him right down to his feet. Oh, oh this is a big run. Needs to get going. Needs to get out of there. Get away out of the clinches and get his distance. Stop holding John. This is where the experience of Eastman comes in. He's holding him up and trying to mess him up. Out. This is where John Duddy needs to walk away head. from him to get the distance to get his punches off. Well, that was a, a very, very busy little spell there from the two of them, and, and they've now heads. just decided to just settle down and take it easy again. And you wonder how many times in a round and how many times in a, a ten-rounder can, can Eastman produce that sort of thing. The thing about it is it's very early on in the fight. Eastman right. maybe Stop frightened back. to let Stop all the guns go in case he leaves everything in behind him. There's still a lot of rounds to go. So he can't take off too much if he hasn't had anything left in the tank for the last half. He knows John Duddy's always going to be there. That's going to be the worry in the East Wing camp. How early can he go? How strong can he go at the start? And still be there after 10 rounds. Duddy comes back again. The consensus would seem to be that uh, East Wing maybe just can't go the full three minutes anymore at 37 years of age today. But he certainly is very dangerous, and Duddy knows he's in the contest. This. Well, apart from uh, the former decent well-rated boxer, Yori Boy Campus is by far the best and the most dangerous opponent that John Duddy has met in his, uh, in his burgeoning uh, professional career so far. Good work by Duddy, right, and then a very good left hook at the end of the round. And Duddy just trying to uh, concentrate a wee bit on the old uh, middle region to draw down the hands of Eastman. Yeah, he needs to work hard, he needs to he's push them back, and sometimes he's pushed them back and not working. He needs to let the hands go, make it look good, force him back. Eastman standing with the feet planted now, and he's breathing quite heavily. Good uh, 
round the corner hook once again from uh, Eastman. That little nick on the outside of the right eye of Duddy has just opened up, and Eastman nearly got him with a left uppercut. A big punch by Eastman, that's his best shot. Has to be very careful and tuck up inside. That's where he's most dangerous. Coming away from the clinches, he needs to tuck up. There we go, there's the right hand coming up, right up through the middle. He needs to watch that and stay down. Well, this is turning out to live up to everybody's expectation. It was a gamble on the part of Duddy. Big right hand there again. Eastman Sterling still in this contest. He's still throwing big shots. Keep it clean, boys. Stop! Duddy uh, caught him with a, a bit of a, a low left hand. There's a little bit of tape has come loose from one of Eastman's gloves. There's the end of the cracking round. Uh, Eastman didn't hear the bell. Crowder booing. And Eastman very apologetic and understandable, such as the racket in here. In the, it's okay being apologetic the after you hit someone. <laughs> it is amazing. The noise here, it's amazing the, the atmosphere. And it really, as we've mentioned, as if we've uh, gone back in time to the 1980s. That was the most exciting round that we've had so far. Corners don't seem to be too worried about his eye. I see they're not sort of overly confident. They're just they're just working away at it. They're not under any pressure at all, so they must be able to handle it well. There's the cuts man getting out already. So if there was any major damage there to his eye, you'd imagine he would be in as late as he could. Robert McCracken, former British Commonwealth and uh, European champion himself. Eastman apologizes to Duddy, said he didn't hear the bell. Here they go again. Round number five. This is scheduled for ten. Remember this to take us up to the halfway stage. Eastman's coming out to start the rounds fast and then trying to take a blow and trying to steal the rounds at the end of it by looking good. And Duddy taking no nonsense from him now. Saw that right hand coming and Eastman holding on using every single trick in his uh, considerably thick boxing book. Keep it clean now, come on. Duddy has a good glance at him. You can see why John Duddy is such a, a hit in New York. He's young, he's good looking, he's Irish. Oh, Fantastic right shot from Eastman, though. He's dead. Again. Again. There's that right uppercut again. That's the one that's going to cause problems. If anything's going to cause a problem, that's going to be the punch. Well, Duddy has taken Duddy's a good chin. But you can only take so many of them, too. He has to come back. In the Eastman corner, and Eastman himself, who's a great ring strategist and craftsman, will have worked out any little deficiencies in the Duddy defense. And this is a much better round from Howard Eastman, and he's got Duddy again with a good right hand. Duddy blowing a little bit now. And again, Eastman with the left, and this is not so far, Hugh, a good round for John Duddy. Well, this is his weakest round so far. He still have the impression that Eastman doesn't have the, the thought to put 100% in the going full ahead in case he doesn't take him out. I think they're still worried. But he's coming back in there now. He's starting to get behind the job. You'd imagine if he used the left job more to get his distance and let his shots get off. He's getting involved and he's getting caught with uppercuts as he comes in. That's the punch that's going to cause him trouble. There's a nice one from himself. Yeah, good left hand from uh, John Duddy. You almost feel you should be talking about the champion and, and the challenger, but of course there's no there's no title here at stake. It is extraordinary here. It's what 23 years since you fought for the very last time in this in this very arena when you won the Lonsdale belt and said that's enough for me 23 years ago it's a blink of an eye Jim in boxing uh, it's great to see boxing back in the same hall this hall's a brilliant hall for boxing the thing it needs it needs people in it and tonight it's a packed house and it, it, it shows it shows the fighters fight for it and it's easier to fight in front of a lot of people than what it is if people don't come out uh, people seem to have taken Duddy and the rest of the card under their wing and uh, everything's been a great success so far well, Duddy getting a little bit more success, but certainly the opening part of this round very much Howard Eastman's, and if anything, this may well be Eastman's round. Duddy coming back now to try to square it up a little bit, but he did ship several very good uppercuts and a couple of good left hands as well. He did, he's very experienced. There he goes, he's starting to just throw it out and try and get the rest of the round in without sort of losing too much ground. John needs to sort of get back in there and show his boss, start forcing him back. You can see Eastman stepping forward. He hasn't stepped forward in the fight for a lot. And they've already said that he's a better fighter coming forward than what he is going back. John needs to put the foot on the gas a bit and take the fight to him. This time they did hear the bell. It was run with uh, considerable force. And Duddy goes back to his run and showed a little sign or two there that he was uh, 
very much, to be honest, on the slightly vulnerable side. That was a good jab, and almost immediately Eastman with those fast hands came straight through, and he did it again. Yeah, one after the other, right on once. He hit him, and then he threw it again. I mean, this is going to be... This, this is one of the problems with John Duddy. He's an exciting fighter, and exciting fighters, believe it or not, get hit. But that's what people pay and come to see. Uh, he's a great package. He's a young kid, but he's in against a very experienced boy who's been around the block more than once, a lot more times than John, so he have to learn, tuck up, and be good. But they don't look too worried. No, they don't. Starting to throw a lot of water over Eastman. Yeah, I think he's feeling it. I mean, there was no particular... Uh, title limit to uh, come in but uh, Howard Eastman came in exactly on 11-6 great professional that he is there they come again five rounds gone halfway into the second half now a good little stiff jab once again from Eastman I'm actually surprised that the referee has allowed Eastman to uh, start this round with so much water around the head and torso a lot of it should have been wiped off it makes for good television though every time uh, Duddy lands with something there's a the huge spray hole. disappears up into the rafters up here at the dear old King's Hall here comes Duddy again but he's trying to force him back come back to the tactics that they use very early on I think they were the tactics that worked best for him when they put Eastman on his back foot he's not as strong going back as what he is coming forward it's not there's that, that right hand punch. again right hand again from Eastman a little corkscrew not so much as a, an uppercut but more a bolo punch coming around through Eastman blowing a bit good solid right from Duddy on the chin of the man from Guyana. Is it any wonder the corner man's hair goes white as quick as it does? I mean, they send these guys out the box behind their job and they just stand toe to toe. There's the hands well up. He caught that punch of Eastman's well up on the right hand. Well, Duddy, I think he was actually boxing the fight that suits Eastman at the minute. Yeah, I mean, and, and you only get fighting the fight that you're allowed to fight. You know, uh, this this does suit Eastman. Does, he's not going to outbox John Duddy at this stage in his career. The, the pace should be set by Duddy. And uh, if Eastman can stick with it at his age, well, that's good. But all those cards should be played in favour of John Duddy. He should be fighting the fight at his pace and doing what he wants to do instead of letting Eastman take the lead from him and make him lead off. Better work by Duddy. Fainted with the right hand and delivered a couple of sweet little lefts and Eastman, old pro that he is, just hung on. Yeah, he seems he seems to be taking a blow, sort of uh, looking for the shot, but not sort of looking for flurries. He's taking one shot and two shot at a time, but his punches are coming in ones and twos, not not in fours and fives that he should be. Just taking a breather once again. He's been still very dangerous though. He covers up very nicely indeed. Both fighters will be starting to think how much the other fighter has left because both of them have been standing toe to toe and it's hard to sort of push the other one back. They would be liking to think that their opponent should be starting to feel it and one should be starting to get on top. But uh, Holly's hands, been halfway through hands. the fight, still a dangerous man in front of you and the luck could still happen. But better by Duddy, needless to say everything he does is uh, applauded. And Eastman has gone about the last couple of rounds pretty professionally, looking for that uppercut again. Smiles when it missed. Blowing a little bit now, Eastman. The mouth is open. Duddy needs just to step it up a little bit. The younger man, that's better from him. Good finish to the round, and immediately the veteran responds. Duddy John steps back and blows, and, and he's looking at Eastman as if to say, where did you come from? Yeah, John needs to take the fight to him. Oh, there's a big right hand again. Good shot by Eastman with the left at the end, and again... He gave Duddy that baleful look. Pretty even that round here. It was, yeah. Anybody that thinks that uh, Hard Eastman was over not to win the night has to be joking. Well, Duddy knew he was going to get a contest. And that's exactly how it's uh, panned out. Again, Eastman taking on an awful lot of water, breathing very heavily, but he's always been in, in superb condition. So they'll have to wipe some of that away. Nice to see John Duddy looking so focused and calm. Yeah, he's, he's, he's heading towards us. He just takes, he's a very professional fighter for to be so young in his career. The whole team uh, take everything in their stride and uh, they don't seem to be overly worried, but... Uh, there's still a lot of opponent left across the ring from him just yet. 
Well, John Duddy, Irish amateur champion at the light middleweight way back in uh, 2002, some five years ago. Opted not to go to the Commonwealth Games in Manchester, where, for my money, he probably would have won the gold medal there, but went to the European Championships on the advice of his then amateur trainer, Charlie Nash, and uh, lost to a very good guy called uh, Yasevikias, Rolandos Yasevikias from Lithuania, who outpointed him in his opening contest. And he decided then to turn pro and made his home in New York. And of course, he's uh, been getting rave reviews. Eastman puffing away, but he knows how to pace a contest, even at this he, age. He does. I mean, that, that's the experience. That's what. That's what the years bring. I mean, as well as the contest. He, he's been here before. He's done that. He's been in hard nights before, and uh, he's going to be in more hard nights. John Duddy just needs to be very careful, tuck up, and start bringing his. Forget about what he's doing, and just step up his own work rate, step in behind the jab, and get his own punches off. There's a nice left jab going forward. Eastman momentarily switched to the southpaw style just to try to confuse Duddy. Duddy not too phased by it. A little backhander from uh, Eastman didn't work. That cut on the outside of the right eye of John Duddy has worsened ever so slightly. And yeah, he's just done the trickle yeah. down the side of his yeah. face. But here comes the man from Derry again. Good work by Duddy. He knows that cut is not going to get any better, despite what the corner do. And Eastman in his own corner now, under a bit of pressure. But he's such a, a great old warrior and such a crafty master of ring skill that he's got himself out of it. Here we go again. I see John Duddy putting Eastman on his back foot. That's what he needs to do. He needs to keep him on his back foot and be the pressure. He needs to pressurize the fight. It needs to be fought at his pace, not at Hard Eastman's pace. Eastman just moving and uh, sucking in the precious air. I'd like to see John getting his punches off in behind that job, get his distance. He needs to get his distance. Flick the left hand, I can get the distance. That's more like it. Yeah, he needs to get the feet in close first. Once you get the feet in, the hands follow. Oh, oh, Better stuff to Duddy. That's a big touch. Eastman hurt. Eastman hurt. Oh, Teddy, he stopped it. No, it's no knockdown. No, no knockdown. knockdown. It was a slip. Whoa. No knockdown. He looked over towards the timekeeper and signaled. Well, that certainly got the crowd going. It's uh, Eastman trying that uppercut again. That was a great piece of pressurizing from uh, John Duddy, and Eastman is tired. That is spurred that spur Duddy on. That is spurred Duddy on. This is what he needs to do. This is the young kid coming on with a chance. Whereas Eastman would step back, Duddy will be all over. 30 seconds remaining of this round seven. They're only, they're, they're only arm punches, time. there's nothing behind them. Yeah. They're only arm punches, just put the arms out. John Duddy needs to get in close and let his shots go. Eastman looking tired. Don't think that he's got time in this round. Eastman just regained his oh. composure, left hand, twice from Duddy. But Eastman hangs on and delivers a couple of rights. Good round for Duddy. Eastman, who's been in with Bernard Hopkins, looks at John Duddy as if to say, well, you've a bit to go, youngster, but you're not too bad. Long time getting the stool in there for Eastman, so they were. Straight to work on that uh, little cut. The uh, adrenaline solution comes in and just helps to seal it off. Sometimes they do some naughty things like, like put melted wax in, don't they? I wouldn't know anything about that, Jim. Absolutely not. I'm quite <laughs> right, too. As the steward of the boxing corner <laughs> control, you shouldn't be even talking about these things with me. My fault. No, he's, uh, the corner seems to have the, the cut well under control. They don't, they don't seem to be worried about it. But having said that, he's been cut before. They're well used it. They have the right people in the corner. And uh, Chief Sagan got out of the way as soon as he got cut, and the cuts man got right in on top of it. The King's Hall is buzzing. Eastman slow getting off the stool. Half a gallon of water around the head and torso of Howard Eastman. This round and then two more. Eastman holding solid Watch right was in from John Duddy, trying to work inside Eastman. Vastly experienced. Better defense by Duddy, but he did get caught with a he good did, right. Yeah. Good work from Duddy as Eastman gets under a little bit of pressure. He's from ducking down a little bit more. He can't hear the referee. Well, Sean Russell saying you must not duck down below waist level. And again, Eastman apologizes and says, I'm sorry. And he said, of course you are. I'm sure. <laughs> but he needs just to keep the pace on now. If he can just find that extra gear and keep pressurizing Eastman. The Duddy Campbell will be wanting to stab it up in these last couple of rounds. This is where he'll be strong. 
Eastman holding on on the blind side of the referee. Duddy coming back at him. Good little solid right hand went in from uh, Eastman. Duddy's got to be careful. Eastman is very dangerous on the retreat. John needs to let his punches go. Don't be weird. He needs to let the shots go. Yeah, he's allowing Eastman to come back. He is. He's, he's making it easy for Eastman. Once he gets in there and gets his distance, he needs to let the punches go. And again, Dudley just uh, faints and steps back and allows Eastman just to regain his composure. Right. Midway back. through the eighth. There's that left hand of John Duddy's again. It's good left hand. And Eastman gets him again for the second time. Eastman by no means finished. A little spurt from Eastman. But what Duddy needs to do, the younger man has put on continuous pressure. He needs, him, he needs to take his heart out. He needs to knock the heart out of him. That's what he needs to do. He needs to put him back and get the punches going in threes and fours and knock the heart out of him because he needs to break his heart. There's only way he's going to break him down. Well, Eastman really is a, a fantastic warrior. There's no way he should let Eastman walk forward towards him. He should be pushing him Watch back all hands, the time, punching hands. him back all the time, taking the fight away from him. Taking the wave. He's been shipped a very good left hand and just nodded his head as if to say, yep, you got me, and Duddy gets him again. He needs to bring that right across now, Duddy. He's setting him up nicely with the left. Single shots aren't going to do this for Duddy. He's got to double them up. No, he needs to put them in combinations, twos and threes, and push him back. That's better. Good right hand from Duddy, and Eastman responds very quickly. He's still got rapier-like reactions. Just pushes the arms out. Dangerous Just stuff from Eastman. Smiles, knows he's got his man caught. Hasn't really hurt him too much. Last few seconds, Duddy needs a big finish now. Overall, another good round for Duddy, and it's Duddy who has the final say. And he says to Eastman, well done, good round. Duddy's round, Duddy ahead. But he's been very dangerous still, Huey. Yeah, I mean, there's still, uh, I think the Duddy camp more than anybody will probably be surprised how much he's just left in the tank of hard Eastman. Uh, he's an experienced fighter and he, he fights, he fights in fits. He starts the rounds very well and then takes rest. That all comes with experience. Uh, John just has to take the fight away from him and be seen to be taking the fight away from him. It's no good walking after him if he's not punching. He needs to be punching and let his punches go. Well. Coming up in the six most important minutes of uh, John Duddy's professional career. Remember, he turned uh, 28 this summer, so he's not in the first flush of youth. That's a pretty good age for a middleweight, considering that Bernard Hopkins is, what, 42 or something? Yes, yeah, I mean, there's, there's still a lot of boys out there the same kind of age, but uh, it's, a, it's a massive division. It's a massive division. There's some big names out there, and there's a lot of money to be made in that division. Well, probably the, the, the top three in the world in the middleweight division are uh, Kelly Pavlik, Ronald Winky Wright, who's been around a long time, and uh, Jermaine Taylor, all from the US of A. And if John Dunney could get a, a contest in New York in Madison Square Garden, which he's uh, sold out with any of them, that would certainly be a big pay night for him. He has to win this one. I think he's doing it against Howard Eastman, but he needs to concentrate for this round and then one more Huey. Yeah, six minutes, I mean, Duddy needs to stop, doesn't need to stop punching, he should be punching for six minutes forward, there he goes. He looks so much more impressive doing that, he needs to come forward and take the fight away from him. He needs to do that. He looks so good when he does that, and Eastman looks so ordinary. But then he stands back and the, the big man comes back with all these big swings and gets hit. And Duddy lets that right hand of his drop and Eastman has got a longer reach and he's able to sweep round the corner and just brush away that defensively of uh, Duddy's. That's a good right hand. Yeah, good shot by uh, Duddy, doubling up that jab. Bit of advice over the top. John Duddy, Eastman just falling short. Still boxing orthodox. He's been known to switch as he did a couple of rounds ago. Yeah. Better by, East, yeah, by needs, Duddy. Good stiff step jab, there. yeah. The, the jab's going to be his main weapon. If he gets his distance with his jab and lets his punches go behind it, he'd be okay. He needs to step in and let the feet get close. That cut has opened up again. It's a, a little steady trickle, not yet a stream or a torrent. And with just a, one more interval to go, they'll patch that up pretty quickly. Yeah, I don't think the cut's going to come into the fight now at this stage, you know, so uh, I think that's out of his mind. That won't be worrying him. Uh, but he, he still needs to be very aware of what's in front of him and keep his punches going. He's still 
looking dangerous. They self-styled uh, Battersea Bomber. Just flicking out, falling short, and Duddy's really got to take his courage in both hands, Hugh. He does, He's yeah, got I mean, to step in. Yeah, he does. It, it, it's what needs to be done, and at this level, it's up a gear. And there we go. With those two left hands, he should be following up in behind that. You'd like to see the right hand coming in behind that. Around the corner from Duddy. Eastman tiring, missing. Duddy looking for a big finish now. 30 seconds to go to the end of this, the penultimate round. No title at stake, remember? Duddy has picked up a few baubles in his time. He's won one or two more meaningful titles. You think John would want to finish the rounds fast? You know, finish the rounds fast. There's only one round to go. Both fighters know exactly where they are. First time Duddy showing a little bit of signs of uh, annoyance. Got hit round the back of the head and didn't like that. A lot of red in his face now from that cut. Of Duddy grits the teeth and comes forward. Both fighters starting to get hard. It's been fought at quite a pace. Yeah, from the off, it's been stuck. John Duddy raises the hand. Eastman just saunters rather tiredly back to his corner for the final little bit of patching up in Duddy's case, final little bit of showering of water in Eastman's case, who sinks eventually down into his stool, where Robert McCracken is a good friend, a long-time trainer, dices him once again. Three minutes to go. How do you see it, Huey? Well, I think Duddy's ahead, OK, I mean, but uh, I think uh, Eastman has came over to put up a fight, and he has done that. Uh, at the stage of his career that he's at, last you would uh, be surprised if, if he wasn't there at the stage, because he has been in with world champions, last and he's been in at the highest level. Round. John, for all the hype that we hear about him, is still relatively young in the game. And, I mean, this the experience that he's gained from this is unbelievable. Uh, I, I, all the well, he's not in drastic conferences around, he should walk away with the points when OK. Uh, you can hear the crowd, they think he's winning anyway. Well, there hasn't been a roar like it in the King's Hall for many, many, many years. So what's left in the tank for Howard Eastman? What has John Duddy got to show us that we haven't seen already? Over nine very turret rounds. There's not going to be a backward step taken in this last round, I have a feeling. No, it's and going to be a hard three minutes. And will the younger, fresher man prevail? I've got Duddy ahead, certainly. Watch your hands, watch your hands, come on. Go right on the cut. cut again from Eastman. It's a very dangerous punch. It's been his main weapon all night, so it has. And he's been catching John with it right up through the middle every, every time he throws it. John Duddy needs to get out of there and get back into his own boxing. Well, Eastman hasn't come here to make up the numbers or just to treasure the check and go back to London. He's come here to give the crowd pleasing John Duddy the workout of his career so far and he's done just that and when you looked at the fight that this, before the fight ever started there was a lot more easier opponents out there than Hard Eastman uh, so Duddy's bit off and put this on paper and says I want to fight this kind of opponent this is the kind of opponent he has to fight and he has to step up in the world rankings Eastman as we say or Eastman as you'd say for a long time was, was in the top four or five in the world over a period of about five years slipping down a little bit now to the late teens maybe 20. Duddy in the round 9 10 11 overall needs this win i think he's going to get it but eastman has made it tough for him there have been a lot of rounds which could have gone either way eastman enjoying himself now good shot by Duddy. naughty from eastman some great names at the ringside here. Freddie Gilroy, Johnny Corwell, Dave McCauley working for another broadcaster. John Kelly. And the man whose that name I let slip in there, the uh, outstanding promoter Barney Eastwood, great friend of Huey Russell's, needless to say. All at, at ringside for what we hope is going to be the renaissance of professional boxing in the King's Hall. There we go, there's John putting on his last big, big push. Last round, both fighters know there's not a lot of time left, so they're going with a big, big push. Well, I'll tell you, Huey, if you were paying 100 quid for a ringside seat, you'd have got value for money for this contest yeah, I mean, alone. It, it's a great fight. I mean, it, on paper, it was a good fight. and it, it, the Two fighters came in the ring, just wanting the box. There was no nonsense before the fight. Both of them came in, done the weight. Both of them came in, no nonsense, and they just came in, and they've done the best of what they can do. 
and there was no hype or no nasty talk or no bad mouthing. Two no, professional boxers, good, one good much fight. more experienced than the other. Good fights don't need that. So last 10 seconds, the decision is going to go to okay. the referee, Sean Russell. Eastman knows very well the clock is ticking away, looking for one big punch. He's caught Duddy a couple of times, and the dairy man has to hang on. And Eastman looking good and smiles. Eastman stands. Duddy gives him a hug. What a contest. What a King's Hall debut for John Duddy. And has he got the decision? It has been an absolute belter. Ten terrific rounds, and Duddy has got the decision. Sean Russell just delayed. The hand of John Duddy goes up. He's defeated Howard Eastman, the former two-time world title challenger. He's inflicted a sixth loss on Howard Eastman in a very, very long and very illustrious career. I'll be interested in you just to see exactly how uh, your namesake, Sean Russell, scored that. But my word, Duddy will go away and think, what have I learned from this? And the answer is a hell of a lot. Yeah, I mean, the experience that he'd get out of this fight, you couldn't buy. It's just one of those fights. Uh, that's the kind of opponent he has to be prepared to meet. And uh, he'll meet harder than that. But he, he's a young lad, and he'll tell you himself, he's very early in his career. He's only coming back. That's the first time back home. He has a massive following in America. But to be so early on in his career, to be top and build in Madison Square Gardens is unbelievable. But uh, I'm sure when he gets the atmosphere back home, he would like to fight here more often. I would think we'd like to see John Buddy fighting here a couple of times a year, but just like the old days. Here's the official result. So John Duddy, the winner here in the King's Hall. Sam's story is still with me. Howard Eastman had all the tricks in the book. He threw everything at John Duddy tonight. An absolute fantastic fight, Stephen. And Eastman was everything that I thought he was going to be. He was crafty. He tried all the tricks in the book, and he tried everything. And John Duddy did exactly what I was hoping he would do, and that would be stay focused and not get carried away with the crowd. Well, a nice hug and a kiss from his uh, girlfriend, his now fiance, actually, Gronje, and his dad, Mickey Duddy, in there as well.